on this episode of The Roaming Homesteaders. They lied to us again, and I can't believe I fell for it. gardening friends and fellow homesteaders. Jake here with the Roaming Homesteaders. And today I want to let you in on a secret. I am astounded by something that I learned over the weekend. And I'll tell you, it got me really excited. And then after the excitement wore off, I mean, I was absolutely astounded. Like my mind was blown and I don't say that very easily, but I was excited at learning something so fundamental. And then the sort of shock wore off and I realized that I'd probably been taken for a fool all these years about this. And uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say apart from I gotta tell everybody about this. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna do a lot of clickbait and you know, drag you along and hold you in suspense for a long time, but I wanted to talk about a couple of things and then I'm gonna give you a live demonstration. Probably not the smartest thing in the world, but I have enough confidence in what I've learned because I've tested it out already. Uh, that I want to show you this so that you can see what I'm talking about. So if you're anything like me, you have a whole box full of insecticides, or organic uh, insect control, and a bunch of other stuff that you've probably spent hundreds and thousands of dollars on somewhere in your garage or your garden shed lurking around. Uh, and I'm not singling out anybody uh, for special treatment here. I'm not telling you that these products don't work. I'm not saying that um, you know, they're bad. I'm not going to get rid of any of these, even though I know this new trick, but, uh, you know, things like, uh, you know, Captain Jack's dead bug, great product. You know, uh, we got some neem oil here. We got a few, you know, inoculants, um, you know, fungicides, paola insect spray with pyrethrins. Um, you know, I, I've even got one of my favorite go-tos for, for things, which is, uh, just sort of, uh, um, you know, oil, cinnamon oil, peppermint oil, these sort of things that are safe for your kids. And then everybody's favorite, diatomaceous earth. Um, you know, these are good products and a lot of them are good organic things for your garden if you're really struggling. But um, they're, they're expensive. I mean, I, I went back out and I stocked up for the, the gardening season again this year. I think I only bought four or five of these this year, but um, you know, it, it was like, it, I don't know, it was, it was at least $50 for some of this stuff. And the main reason I do this every year is I love my squashes. Summer squashes like these zucchini behind me, pumpkins, uh, various other winter squashes, butternut squashes. I love squashes. Squashes are great uh, for eating and, and being healthy and they store a good long time. And they're a real fun thing that I enjoy growing in the garden. Uh, you know, I have a real passion for pumpkins and squashes and I wanna keep that up. But anybody who loves growing squashes knows that if you grow squashes, they will come. And I'm referring specifically to squash bugs. The dreaded squash bug is probably the bane of my gardening existence, especially later in the summer when the populations explode. And I have struggled to control them for years. The squash bugs we have here in California are very persistent. Uh, they're, they're not easily controlled. I will say this though, it's not as bad as it was when we lived in North Carolina. Uh, you know, I, I look at the millennial gardener and I see the work that he does out there and I, I really pity him for his bug pressure because I know firsthand just how bad the bugs can be out in coastal North Carolina uh, between Raleigh and Wilmington. And I was astounded at how quickly my garden was decimated, even early in the season. And I gave up when we were there. So I didn't, uh, I just gardened the first summer and, and then gave up because I didn't know what to do about the bugs at the time. But I eventually learned how to deal with the squash bugs and I came up with a ritual. Every morning I come out here with my dust buster. Those are great for sucking up big bugs like squash bugs. Uh, you know, I, I come out with the dust buster, a knife for scraping eggs off of things if they don't rub off, and a paper towel to squish things. And I just go after the squash bugs with a vengeance. And that works great until about July uh, when, when the numbers just boom because it's, it's almost impossible to, to deal with them. 
So I had to come up with other solutions for you know what, keeping my squash beauties growing well and not overwhelmed by bugs. And uh, thankfully, we don't have powder, powdery mildew here uh, very much at all. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, but the squash bugs are, are, like I said, they're just the bane of my, my, my gardening existence sometimes. Another bug that we have to deal with here in California and pretty much everywhere in the Pacific Northwest and in the Intermountain States are wasps. I hate wasps. You know, they're just these angry jerks of the insect world and they can make your uh, existence in the garden miserable if they get a toehold anywhere near you. And they can chase you out of your own garden if you're not careful. And if you're allergic, it's literally a deadly problem. Here, we have this large wooden fence around our rental property. And the wasps love getting in the wood and underneath things and setting up these little clusters of, of uh, nests. And you know, you might have 20 to 50 wasps hanging there at different points along your fence. And I'm constantly putting out these, these yellow wasp traps. Everybody's seen them from, from uh, uh, Walmart or wherever you get them. They're, they're just, everybody uses them because they have the lure in them and you can try, and try to drown a few. And then you can make those ones with chicken hanging over water and things that the wasps love and they'll go for it. But it never really seems to get rid of the problem uh, you know, where it starts. These things can also be kind of dangerous too because they have a lure in them. Uh, it kind of smells like, you know, apple pectin to me. I don't know exactly what's in it, but when you hang one of these things up, it actually tells you to hang it up away from people uh, because it will attract wasps. And when I hang this up over, you know, in front of one of our leaky sprinklers down by the water where I see all the wasps coming, I'll have a hundred wasps buzzing around this thing and it won't necessarily catch them all. It just kind of attracts them there. So, you know, it, this is another struggle I've had is dealing with the wasps. Okay, so I told you I wasn't gonna keep you in suspense. I'm not trying to drag it out. I just wanted to, you know, empathize with you guys and, and lay out the problem. So, you know, I've got squash bugs. I, I have an infestation of cucumber beetles here. I haven't seen them before. So they've come to the garden this year in droves and I'm dealing with them as well. We got wasps constantly here. We've had aphids in prior years and a few other, these sort of uh, uh, hard shell bugs, we'll call them. And then of course we've got slugs and snails and all those sort of things. And I've actually caught three or four squirrels in my garden this year eating on things and had to chase them off. So it's been an interesting year for um, the usual suspects and a few newcomers to the garden. And so I'm sitting on my couch on Saturday, just kind of racking my brain, cruising the internet and, and looking at YouTube videos. And I ran across this random guy. And I, I honestly didn't think to, to bookmark it at the time because I was kind of so excited and I ran outside to go test it out. And then I think the kids got on there or something and I lost the page. So I, I could probably find it and try to put the link below for you. But anyway, I ran across this guy and he's telling me like, hey, you can kill most of the bugs in your garden for like under a buck. And, and I didn't believe him. I'm thinking, no, there's no way it can be that easy. You know, if, if that's the truth, then why did I buy all that other stuff all these years and struggle along? And uh, you know, he showed us this trick and I'm gonna show you that trick too. And it's gonna blow your mind. Um, now, I'm gonna tell you this, I, I know, before you guys say anything, I know that some of the things in this product are, you know, I don't wanna say questionable, they're, they're not organic, they're, they're chemicals, but I've been doing some more research on this and, and the gist of this is, I don't think you need the item that I'm gonna show you and I've been researching some other natural alternatives, but I'll, I'll, show you, I'll show you what it does and why it's so simple and how you can apply it in your garden. So what is this miracle insecticide that I've been going on and on about? It's gonna blow your mind. Get ready for it. Dish soap, dish soap. Let me say that again, dish soap. Now, this is Dawn Ultra. We happen to get a big thing of it at Costco. I'm not necessarily schlepping that, but it's not actually the dish soap that matters. You can get a, a dollar bottle of Ajax at the Dollar Tree or something, and it'll do the same thing, but it's not the dish soap. It's actually what's in the dish soap. Sodium lauryl sulfate. Sodium lauryl sulfate is the strongest surfactant that there is 
that's used in commercial products. And it's considered safe, but you know, that's questionable. Any other chemical that they're making these days isn't exactly natural. But sodium lauryl sulfate is what we call a surfactant. A surfactant actually breaks the surface tension of water and helps to penetrate, um, you know, stuck on things and greases and it dispels it. And if you've ever taken a, a greasy bowl of water and dropped a single drop of soap in the middle, you'll see how all the oil immediately goes. Whew. That's what a surfactant does. And sodium lauryl sulfate in most dish soaps breaks the surface tension of the water and causes the water to be able to penetrate things that are normally covered in oil or have sort of resistance to water absorption. Now, what does that have to do with bugs, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. You know, you might have seen bugs walking on water or beads of water on bugs. It's because of this stuff that's on them that keeps them from basically drowning every time that there's water. And if water in its natural state gets on them, it'll just beat off and fall off and they don't have to worry. And that's how most bugs are in the world. I'm not talking about your soft shell bugs and your caterpillars and things. Um, I honestly don't know if it works on them. I, I don't think it does, but we'll, we'll say hard shell bugs, beetles, uh, wasps, those sort of critters. Um, that's, that's how they are. The trick that dish soap actually does, this is how it was explained by my fellow YouTuber, um, sodium lauryl sulfate in dish soap breaks the uh, surface tension of water and basically creates a new liquid that'll penetrate everything. And when you spray soapy water on these bugs, they drown. The water will not bead off and fall off of them. It will immediately penetrate them and they will literally drown instantly, instantly. I'm not even exaggerating. I'm going to give you a demonstration of this shortly with wasps. I found a wasp nest this morning. I'm really excited. They drown. It's almost instant. You don't have to spray them with a chemical foam and wait for 10 minutes while they flop around and if they shake it off and come and sting you, you know, you're freaking out, you're running away, none of that. You spray them with soapy water and they die. My mind was blown. This is what I was describing at the beginning. I did this and they died. And I thought, oh man, that's amazing. I gotta tell everybody. And then it was like, oh man, oh. I've been doing this all wrong all these years. And I started researching it and I looked at the back of my soap bottle and there's some other stuff in there and I thought, hmm, this is cool, but do I really wanna spray all these things all over my garden and do I wanna soap it up? I mean, there's gotta be some sort of impact here that's not necessarily good for everything. So I did some research on this and for now, I think it's good to use the soapy water trick as I'm gonna show you. For, for heavy infestations and knocking down the bug pressure, I think this is, a, this is a good tool and I'm gonna show you how to use it. But I think we can do better. There are natural surfactants out there, different than sodium lauryl sulfate. There's a bunch of them actually. One of now, I'm gonna do a little more research into this, but if you can use natural surfactants in gardening products, I think it would change everything. You know, if you could throw a $2 product or a $1 product into a, a, a gallon of water or, or a sprayer and just spray it on whatever bugs you have and trust that it's not gonna contaminate your garden, it's not gonna add additional polymers and copolymers and triglycerides and all this other stuff that's gonna get into your food, I think this could change how we deal with bugs. And that's what I'm gonna do. So. Uh, let me go ahead and show you how this soap works and then we'll talk a little bit more about natural surfactants. So this part's really easy. You just take your soap, a couple of gallons of water, and you put it in there just like that. Squirt, 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 you know, seven or eight tablespoons, voila. And then you throw it in your sprayer. You shake it up, oops, you shake it up. And then you pump it up. All right, I promised you a live demonstration. And what we have here is a wasp nest. I found this sucker. We're gonna go ahead and spray this thing. And I'm gonna show you just what happens. So keep an eye out and watch. You ready?
Look at that. They're not playing dead. Those wasps are not playing dead. They are dead. Look at that. I, I'm absolutely astounded every time I do this. Here's another shot here. These are some of the wasps. There's five or six more that fell down in the corner. They are just, they're dead, they're dead. I mean, look at these wasps, they're just, they're dead. They're dead. Dead wasps. Well, there you have it folks, a live demonstration of dish soap and water in a sprayer. That's it, dish soap and water wiped out an entire wasp nest right before your very eyes. And I think it has some really good applications for your garden. Thanks for watching this episode of The Roaming Homesteaders. We hope it inspired your homesteading and gardening activities. If you have any questions, please ask them below and I'll be happy to answer. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Have a great day, bye.